I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, and this is the fourth time I've recorded this episode, so let's just start talking about the new Mod Podge Ultra and ask the question, can it coat 3D printed parts? And the answer to that is actually yes, it's actually pretty good at that, except there are some details. So let's get started. So indeed, I am serious about recording this video four times, that's not a joke. First time I was calling this product by the wrong name, I was calling it Mod Podge, which isn't correct, it's Mod Podge, and I knew people would yell at me. Second time, I don't even remember what happened the second time. Third time, the audio was all screwed up, so this is the fourth time. That's right, second time audio was screwed up, third time audio was still screwed up. So now I'm pretty sure the audio is not screwed up, but anyway. This is the new Mod Podge Ultra. It's a spray-on version of the very popular line of Mod Podge products from the company Plaid. Now, this thing here is designed for a whole wide variety of hobby applications, but coating 3D prints is not actually one of them. In the past, I have used other products made by this company, in particular Mod Podge Hard Coat, to go ahead and cover the 3D printed shoulder pads on my StarCraft II Ghost cosplay. So I have used these products for the purpose of getting rid of print lines and things like that. But like I said, this particular version of it is not specifically rated or designed for that, but let's see if it works anyway. So for that, let me talk about the experiment I ran and show you the results of how things turned out. For these tests, I printed up a total of eight 3D printed objects that were all the same thing, and for some reason, they kind of look like the blade of a sword. I wonder what I might be up to. But three of them were printed in 0.1 millimeter layer heights, five of them were printed in 0.2 millimeter layer heights, and then I added a certain amount of layers of the Mod Podge Ultra. So for example, here these two had no Mod Podge applied to them, and then each one of these other ones, the number represents how many layers were added. Now each layer was about five to six sprays of the material, and then I let it dry for four to eight hours depending on how things were going. Um, it is important to let this particular product dry between layers and the actual drying time will vary between 4 and 24 hours depending on temperature, humidity, and things like that. Then after I applied all the Mod Podge, I applied several layers of a filler primer following the instructions on the can. So let's take a look first at the 0.2 millimeter layer height and see how things turned out. So this is my control where I only have the filler primer applied. With only three layers of Mod Podge Ultra, there isn't really much of a difference. So you're going to have to use quite a bit of this Mod Podge Ultra if you really want to start affecting your 3D printed parts. Even with six layers of the Mod Podge Ultra, you can still see the layer lines pretty well, and if you move your finger across them, you can still feel them a little bit. When you start getting in to nine and 12 layers, things start looking a lot better. Um, by nine layers here, you still I can still see the lines, but you really can't feel them too much. So maybe with a little bit of sanding and a little bit more primer, this would probably work pretty well. For the 12 layers, it's looking pretty darn good. I can still see the lines just a little bit if I look really close, but from any sort of distance, especially when I apply a final coat of paint to it, it would probably be looking all right. Now there is one important thing to be paying attention to. If I hold this guy up really close to the camera, what you will probably be able to see, you can kind of see what looks almost like burn marks on the surface of the Mod Podge. It's like this damage a little bit. I've seen this before. What I think is happening is non-acrylic primers interact with the Mod Podge in some way to where it basically causes the surface to break up and get as damaged look to it, which is something you probably don't normally want. However, if you use acrylic primers, which for the most part, I think all the major brands and tabletop wargaming paints like Games Workshop, as well as um, Army Painter, those are all acrylic based primers. I have never seen this particular issue, but it is something to be aware of when you're using the Mod Podge to coat your 3D printed parts. All right, so let's move on to the 0.1 millimeter layer heights. And unsurprisingly, these worked quite a bit better. So here's our control. And even with just the deep scratch filling auto body primer, it looks pretty good. Once you apply four layers of Mod Podge, I can still see 
the individual layer lines, but I really can't feel them too much. So even four layers looks, yeah, it'll probably work pretty good, especially when you get some sort of final coat of paint on here. But with eight layers, the layer lines are almost all gone. And I bet if you went up to a full 10 layers, you would probably see almost no layer lines from the particular print. And I bet all you, it would look like is a real solid object. So let's talk a little bit about why you would use this Mod Podge Ultra versus other types of products, in particular like XTC 3D or even Mod Podge Hard Coat. The big advantage here is you have almost no human labor involved, which is really, really nice. You can think about XTC 3D, which is a two-part epoxy. You gotta mix it together in the right conditions. You gotta apply it all over your piece. And then you gotta be careful not to get into tiny details, make sure it doesn't clump up too much in one area and then when it's all said and done with you got to go ahead and do a whole bunch of sanding to make it smooth. All the pieces you saw here today I have done no sanding with. Then with something like Mod Podge Hard Coat which is more thicker version of this stuff you do have to apply it with a brush you have to apply it in certain layers following a certain amount of drying time between layers and then there is still sanding involved and there's a little bit of wet sanding and things like that so there's still with the um, Mod Podge hard coat, there's still some human labor involved, and you're also get a situation where you can't use the non-acrylic based primer, otherwise things might get screwed up. But this stuff, all you really do is just spray on some of this stuff and walk away, come back in like four, eight hours or whatever it may be, and apply another layer. So it's really easy to apply this material, but like I said, if you need to apply say 10 layers of it, you're looking at four to eight hours between layers, maybe more. This is something where the 3D printed part would need to be done maybe two, two and a half weeks ahead of time. And you can just kind of spray this stuff on and come back later, spray another one on. If you got a situation where the prop needs to be turned around in 48 hours, this is not going to work for you. There simply just isn't enough time to get enough layers on. But I think what I need to do from this point is move on to working on a larger piece. So in the not too distant future, I'll 3D print up like a dagger size thing, something maybe like this long, maybe nine, 10 inches long. And then I will use the Mod Podge Ultra to coat it and see how it all turns out in a more complete setting than simply just some sample pieces. But I would say this Mod Podge Ultra is off to a pretty good start for coating 3D printed parts. Now this bottle here, it's an eight fluid ounce bottle. 236 milliliters and it clocks in at $15 US. And if I go ahead and turn it around here, if I put my finger right around there, the top of my finger, that is about how much I use to coat all these pieces. So I'm really not sure if you had a large um, 3D printed part, how much of this bottle you would actually use, but you may go through it pretty quickly. So it's probably in the end going to be a little bit more expensive than something like XTC 3D. But like I said, this is all about saving your human labor time more than anything. And also it is non-toxic. So there's no fumes you got to worry about. You can just kind of spray it wherever and well, not wherever you want to, you know, don't want to get the glue all over the place. So you got to put some newspaper down or things like that. But you know, <laughs> it's a lot easier to use than something like a two part epoxy type solution. Well, thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. To get more videos like this, including the next one where I work with the Mod Podge Ultra on a more realistic example of a prop, go ahead and hit subscribe here on YouTube. Also, I'll be working on some more cosplay stuff, tabletop wargaming things, and of course, Micro Flash Delta, my three pound combat robot, is hiding somewhere over there. I'm continuing the tradition of pointing off the camera to something you guys can't see. So until then, have a good week.